side of that coin, do you feel that there are, are negative side effects to gun control as far as to innocent people, responsible gun owners, for instance? Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, it violates their inalienable rights. <laughs> sure. And any time you do that, I think any country that do, does that is starting to go down the wrong road. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, I think it does. It, it disarms victims, and I can't ever do anything that would, uh, that would cause that. I'd never be in favor of anything that did that. Mm -hmm. Now, getting to, to where we live in the state of Massachusetts, um, where do you see the state of Massachusetts heading in the areas of crime, violence, and firearms? I'm afraid it's, well, I'll, actually I'll start with the good news. The good news is that the Libertarian Party is the fastest growing party in the state and probably in the country at this point, which isn't to say it's growing fast, but it's growing faster than any other party. So I see that as a sign of optimism because the more people there are who believe in victims being armed, the more people who believe that prohibition laws cause more problems than they solve, uh, I think the better off we'll all be in the long run. Mm -hmm. So uh, all I can say is that's why I'm here. That's why I want to speak to the public. That's why I ran for office. I want to expose the public to the libertarian ideas so that they'll join us and we can move on in that direction. If people won't hear what we're saying or if we don't do a good enough job getting the message out, then I'm afraid the future is bleak because we're going to keep voting for the same people who are putting these dangerous laws in effect now, and they'll probably expand upon them, which is what they keep doing. They keep putting law upon law upon law. They keep promising that the next one is going to somehow fix what the last one didn't. That's why we have 20,000 gun laws in this country today. They don't work, hmm. but people keep believing that they will work, despite the evidence. This next one's going to do it. Right. That's always the promise the politicians comes up, come up with, is that the next thing, the next Band-Aid that we come up with, and it usually costs us money and it usually weakens our liberty, and it doesn't solve the problem. Hmm. So we need, we need people elected into office who will get rid of prohibition laws and who will liberalize gun rights. That's how we will get to a safer America. Hmm. Okay. And in, in the meantime, as far as the people who are kind of pushing the, the anti-gun things now, um, should Massachusetts gun owners and, and the rest of the, United, the gun owners in the United States, should we be concerned about the existing and proposed gun laws that are, that are out there now? Of course we should. I mean, again, I don't see how, I don't see how any politician in his right mind is, it would think that another gun law is going gonna, is gonna to help matters. It's not going to help matters. Um, if you listen to Carla Howell when she ran against Teddy Kennedy last year, she made a lot of sense. And she got over 300,000 people to vote for her. So again, I see that as uh, it's a positive sign. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of her support did come from uh, gun right activists who, who see her as somebody who will come in and erase laws, not make new laws. Hmm. Sure. Um, in the state of Massachusetts, we have something known as Chapter 180. Um, would, would you like to tell us what that is and, and whether we should be concerned about it and, and how so? Well, I think the biggest problem with Chapter 180 is, is it gives too much discretion to each city and town's police chief. He gets to decide pretty much unilaterally whether or not people will have the right to bear arms. And that's like ripping somebody's arm off. Even the idea of that, the idea, even if you happen to live in a city or town where you got, you got lucky and your chief does allow it or is liberal with it. Just the idea that he has that power, I think in a sense, is obscene. Mm -hmm. So and it, it, it's almost, I hear a lot of people defending it by saying, well, most chiefs, you know, they'll be reasonable. That doesn't really console me because what, about, what happens if the next chief isn't so reasonable? I want to remove that that power. It's, it's unreasonable to let one person have that much power. The other thing about Chapter 180 that troubles me is that it bans particular kinds of guns and there are many different kinds of people. I don't, I think it should be up to the consumer who needs self-defense self to decide what kind of gun is best for him or her. They, th there seems to be some discrimination against smaller guns because maybe they're more concealable, but 
what if you're a petite woman and you're being stalked and you need and you can only handle a smaller gun? I don't want to discriminate against people, and I think that's what Chapter 180 does. Sure, sure, and, and you're right. Some of the magnum rounds uh, for a smaller person with smaller hands, it's, it's really difficult to, to handle mm -hmm. a gun like that. Right. That's a good point. Um, what would you like to say to, to people who consider themselves to be anti-gun? I think their heart is in the right place. I think they look at the term gun control, which carries a certain presumption, which, which is that guns can be controlled. They see the term and they, and they sort of just buy into it. They believe that it's possible, just the way some people believe drugs can be controlled, just the way some people believe prostitution can be stopped, just the way some people believe the government can guarantee our social security. There are some people who just believe, I think they, it's because they want to believe it. I think they envision a world where there's no guns and they think it's, you know, and maybe that would be a lovely place. But the fact is, there will always be guns. And bad people will always have guns. And bad and people as, will always want to have guns. Right, and even if people have to make them in their own basements, they'll have them. This is, what, this is what I'm talking about. It's just a reality that we have to face. There are going to be evil people in the world. There are going to be evil people with guns in the world. I want to make sure there are good people with them too. That's a good point because um, maybe you and I may not be able to make a gun, but any, anyone with some basic metal fabrication skills can make a gun. And yep. you can be sure that criminals are either going to learn those skills or find someone that has them, and criminals will always have guns as long as That's right, and it's, just, and it's just another, another reason for underground economies to exist and uh, underworld activity to exist. Any way we can get rid of underworld activity, I'm all for it. Sure. And, and liberalizing gun rights, I think, is one way to do that. I, I prefer not to call gun control gun control. I prefer to call it victim disarmament. Because when push comes to shove, that's really what we're talking about here. Keeping that's in mind that we will never, ever have a world without guns. It might be nice, but we'll never be there. Sure. That's well put. Um, that's, we're pretty much running out of the time that we had allotted. Are there, are there any other comments or, or thoughts that you'd like to convey before we close? Or? Next year is going to be a very exciting year for the Libertarian Party. We have the Small Government Act, which we're working very hard to get on the ballot. It's going to be an initiative to end the Massachusetts income tax. We want to become one of the states that no longer has one. Uh, we'll also probably have a very exciting gubernatorial candidate. Some people are suggesting and hoping it will be Carla Howell, who some of you, some of the viewers are probably uh, familiar with. Um, and also, there'll be a senatorial candidate running against Senator John Kennedy, uh, Kerry. And uh, so it's going to be a very busy year for us. Uh, we're still, uh, even though we're a major party in Massachusetts, we're one of the smaller ones, and we. Uh, we have limited resources and we're encouraging anybody who agrees with us to join us. Uh, you can visit the Ma Massachusetts uh, Libertarian Party website at lpma.org and also 1-800-ELECT-US, uh, you can contact the National Libertarian Party. Um, any way you can get in touch with us, please do. Any way you can help us, help us collect signatures for our ballot question or for our candidates to get on the ballot. Any way people can help us, we'll appreciate it. Wonderful. And if viewers would like to uh, learn more about you, is there a website where they can... Uh well, I had my campaign website since I ran for office uh, for city council this year in Waltham, and that's richocoin.com. It hasn't been updated to reflect that the campaign is over, uh, but it has a lot of information in there about my, my ideas and libertarianism in general, and I, I hope some people will visit and think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. Well, good, good. Glad to thank you for being on today. Thank you, Mike. All right.